So uh, let's go. Sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first webinar with Yasna. Yasna has joined the uh, Paralect Accelerator Advisor Group. And so together we thought we would have a webinar all about upping your LinkedIn game and making LinkedIn work for you as much as possible as a founder, as an employee, as a team member, and just as a professional person. I had the chance to have a wonderful interview with Yasna for my podcast a little bit ago. And I got to learn a lot. I hope that all my listeners did. And I'm happy to have her here with us to share more of her experience and her tips for just making a better LinkedIn experience. So over to you, Yasna. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John. So uh, today's presentation is going to be about profile optimization, but I would say in general, it's going to be uh, why LinkedIn, why it's not something else, uh, and why this is important uh, uh, to use, uh, why it's such an important tool to use as a founder. Um, so uh, just kind of like for all those people who can, um, I know some of you can because you are on the fly, uh, put the camera in, on so we can kind of like interact face to face. Um, and of course, be on mute and then unmute yourself when you want to speak. Um, and um, I don't know if you ever use this, but we're going to do one session with breakout rooms. So we are not a huge group, but uh, nevertheless, we're going to make a smaller group um, and we'll do some work because uh, this is a workshop. It's not uh, uh, just uh, talking, but also you working uh, within this hour. Uh, so. Um, I just want to ask you, um, and not to do anything at the moment, but you can just put yes in a chat or no in a chat. When is the last time you Googled yourself? Uh, it was that recently, or you've never done it. So maybe just, I want to hear from you. Some people have the occasion. Uh, they Google themselves, you know, all the time, like every month. Uh, and some people, they never do it. So uh, John, if you've done it a few years ago, you got to check it now because, oh, Subik did it. <laughs> <laughs> because weird things can happen uh, if you uh, can pop out, actually. And I want to start with a story. Um, this is my uh, neighbor. Uh, she is also my co-host at LinkedIn Local. LinkedIn Local is a series of social networking events, a global movement. I organize that locally. Um, and she's a pitch coach. Um, and um, it's interesting that when she made, and this is what exactly we are talking today, she actually uh, had her profile and she never mentioned on her profile that she had international experience coaching at Andy Harrington's. And Andy Harrington is this uh, pitch coach that coaches people for Celatrons. So I don't know if you heard about this term Celatron, uh, me neither, but actually this is a, uh, when you are trying to sell um, it to a lot of people. So like when you have the whole stadium of people, kind of like this Tony Robbins style, uh, this is how uh, this is actually what he coaches, uh, how to sell to a large audience. So Mita was working there as a pitch coach. So basically she was more than uh, really like she really knew how to sell stuff through the presentation and through the storytelling. Um, and um, she, um, interestingly enough, she wanted to coach TEDx speakers. So she reached out here in Slovenia to the TEDx organization and arranged for coffee um, uh, to meet with the guy who was in charge of that. Um, I don't know if you knew about it, but it's very honorable uh, for coaches, uh, for pitch coaches, uh, public presentation coaches to actually coach TEDx uh, speakers. Usually this is done pro bono because this is a sign of prestige. And what happened is, uh, she contacted him, uh, added him on LinkedIn, connected with him on LinkedIn. The guy read her LinkedIn profile and canceled the coffee. <laughs> so there was no business in relation to that. So, so what is the moral of this story? Um, I mean, later on, Meta, which is interesting, she polished her profile. She was much more clear what she does with, about her intentions and she also mentioned all the references the having the social proof um, and also mentioning uh, that she was a coach um, uh, at Andy Harrington she even got the recommendation uh, by him and uh, a few months after another local TEDx called her so I know it's all in Slovene but it doesn't really matter 
uh, um, uh, you see the photos, and she coached all the TEDx speakers in another city. Um, and after that, um, uh, this guy reached out to her and had coffee with her. So you never know when you miss a business opportunity because it's only you have one chance to make a first impression. And now we're living in this digital first world. Uh, so we get to know the people digitally first before we meet them face to face, like we are meeting today over Zoom, or we meet them in person. And this is what I would like to kind of like talk about today. Uh, so uh, one connection, uh, one referral or one comment or one post can be enough to land a major opportunity um, on LinkedIn and beyond. Uh, but you only have one opportunity to make your first impression. So uh, when we finish this workshop, Google yourself, make some screenshots and check out uh, what actually comes out uh, on, on Google because you may be negatively surprised. Uh, actually more than 50% of people statistically they found out in the research, they discover that uh, actually their online identity is something <laughs> that they didn't like. But we just don't, we are not in the habit of Googling ourselves, yeah? So before, um, before we uh, proceed uh, with more details, uh, a bit things about me. And at the same time, I would love if you can introduce yourself in the chat at your LinkedIn profile or, or any other social media you have so we can all connect with each other um, and introduce yourself as well, or write us an interesting introduction so people uh, know and learn something about you, maybe something that's not even on the LinkedIn profile. Um, so as I mentioned, I come from Slovenia. This is uh, on the sunny side of the Alps, as we love to call it. Actually, I live quite close to the Alps, um, like 20 minute drive. So uh, I can do a lot of hiking. Um, and the photo is in the corner below. I studied in the States um, and returned uh, and worked mostly in finance in the beginning. Um, I spent 10 years uh, with software development company, uh, the largest one in the region having more than uh, 1000 software development engineers. Um, and I was the person responsible in marketing actually to help them sell uh, their solutions and services abroad. Um, and since I mostly, since I studied in the States, I did also a lot of US. Um, and then um, in my 40s, that was a very brave move. Uh, after being in corporate life, I joined uh, a startup as a product manager, as the first product manager, and then another startup. Uh, so I stayed in the startups, uh, but unfortunately, the last startup I worked for, which was, which was an awesome one, it closed down. Um, uh, the whole team in Slovenia actually got shut down, although we were working internationally. Um, and then this is how I started my freelancing career. So I wrote this uh, uh, first article, uh, why a killer go-to-market always wins over a great product, because I was so frustrated with engineers having this product first mentality. Um, and now I'm kind of like more into this creative business. So I still coach B2B tech founders on uh, um, how to launch, uh, how to create and design their go-to-market strategy. But I also I have also started to um, um, uh, drill down LinkedIn because it's such an important traction channel for B2B, especially for B2B tech. Um, and last year I was accepted as an instructor on Maven um, and I have a course there, which is called e-networking. Uh, so remember the date, April 4th, uh, I start the next cohort. But now let's get back to enough of me uh, let's get back to you. I want you kind of now to take a note or whatever if you write uh, on computer and um, think about for two minutes, reflect what does this networking and e-networking mean to you? So uh, if you can describe it with your own words. So two minutes to go, I'll put you some music. Um, I put the timer uh, and just kind of like think about it and when we are done, um you you put it in a chat uh, or you can share it as well yeah so find
Okay, time is up. So I hope it was not too hard of the exercise. So Alexandra already posted um, in, in the chat. So I'll just read it out loud. In the meantime, everybody else can post. So um, when I think of networking, the first points that come to my mind is sharing expertise, being able to learn from others and share what I know. This is also about being open to about new opportunities uh, uh, of work. Yes, this is an awesome definition. So, and John said, building relationships with folks uh, with shared interests could be work or non-work related, trying to find ways to collaborate towards common goals. Awesome, this is also an awesome definition. Making connections and relationship building with individuals and organizations. So my least favorite activity when forced prefer to let just happen organically when people reach out to us. Yes, yes, I really, uh, yes, definitely. It's not about cold calls. Um, and uh, build and grow connections with people based on win-win principle. It's all about honest and clear sharing of ideas, fears, and questions. Awesome, Alina. And Suvik, seeking like-minded people to share experience, thoughts, and dream. Awesome. So I, I'm really glad to hear that you are not contaminated as most of the people are, are uh, that networking is something that you want to sell something to somebody because this is how networking actually got a bad name. Um, and uh, I'm quoting here um, uh, uh, the Chris Frelick, uh, he's um, the VC guy. So um, if you find yourself keeping score, and none of you actually said that, which is awesome, uh, your profession relationships, you are not, you are on the wrong track. So uh, relationships take years to build, start now. This is his message. And I try to repeat it because I think it's really important and it really resonated with me. So now we are actually back to LinkedIn. And this is how I kind of like incorporated the, this networking part with LinkedIn. Um, and it's having a minimum viable profile so people that you're really clear and people understand, and this is what we're going to be touching today, um, uh, that people, you are clear of what you offer and what you do and that you have this call to action if you want to do networking, uh, that you are open about it. Uh, the second one, the second skill you have to master is having direct, knowing how to write, how to connect with people properly in LinkedIn. Um, how to send connection requests and um, how to start a conversation in direct messages. This is kind of a micro copy, but it's really important. We will not have enough time to cover that today, but you can always come. I'm gonna share the link. Uh, I'm having almost every week now a uh, e-net practice e networking workshops. So you can always hop on. Uh, you can find the link on my profile and you can join us. And this is where we practice networking. It's a soft skill that actually can be learned. Of course, you also, if you want to uh, sell something, you need social proof. Um, and what I've been teaching people to do it around events, because if you are planning to go to an event or if you are an event like we are now, uh, people are going to be much more apt to connect with you because uh, they met you, they've seen you on Zoom, or you attended the same event uh, and you will have a common ground uh, to talk about, yeah? Much easier than cold calling. Uh, so I just wanna make, uh, I don't know uh, what is your um, uh, level of uh, understanding of LinkedIn. So I just wanna make a quick LinkedIn intro. Why is it so important? Um, so probably, as you already noticed, LinkedIn is the largest e-networking event, opens 24 hours. And what is awesome about it, it's not focused only on one country, it's actually quite global. Um, and you can access whatever you, whichever audience you want to reach, uh, you can actually access quite fragmented markets. Uh, so this is an awesome platform to be on. Another thing that it's why LinkedIn is not like Twitter or Facebook is um, Facebook is actually ruled by um, uh, company pages. There are company pages on LinkedIn, but uh, individuals pages. So personal profiles are much more important because uh, on LinkedIn than um, in comparison to Facebook. Um, and another thing is here you uh, connect with people. So LinkedIn is a surrogate for your CRM. So if I met with all of you today, 
and you would write me a personal collection connection requests uh, request and write oh nice meeting you blah 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 here and here um, if i would have met you like two years after somewhere and we would want to connect and i would actually see that we already met before uh, and because we exchanged uh, messages you would see, uh, we would know how we interacted and how we met. So I don't have to have a complex CRM in place, uh, but I would still be able to be in touch with you. Uh, so another, the, the most important thing that matters on LinkedIn is actually having your uh, zone uh, that it's called a uh, friend of a friend zone. These are not your actual friends, this, these are connections, but this is where the magic happens because people you already know, uh, they already helped you and maybe they cannot help you further, but people who know your friends, these are the ones that actually can help you out. And um, you probably notice if you don't have a huge network on LinkedIn, if you would like to reach out to people who are your third degree connections, this is really hard because LinkedIn wants to pay for that. So it's pay for play. They would want you to upgrade, to send them uh, an email as they call it. They would want you to send them a message. Uh, and this message has a little lock. Uh, you, if you probably notice that, um, they, they want you to pay. So if you want to grow on LinkedIn organically, the name of the game is actually to expand your network uh, beyond and expand this green friend of a friend zone. Because immediately, for instance, if you would add me on LinkedIn and I would accept the invitation, um, all my connections that could be your third degree connections, immediately once we connect, we become first degree connection they become your second degree connection. So you can access my network or anybody else you're gonna connect with uh, uh, for free, uh, free of charge. Link LinkedIn will not charge you for that. But of course you have to expand your network. That's the name of the game. Uh, so this friend of a friend zone, it's quite unique. It's only on LinkedIn that things work like that. So um, if you probably, uh, if you've been using LinkedIn, you probably know that. Uh, but I just had to state it out because a lot of people, it's not really clear uh, how it works. So um, if you're from B2C, LinkedIn can be quite useful, especially uh, for your professional career, uh, for job search. But let's say uh, it's of paramount importance if you are from the B2B world uh, or marketplace or as a founder, because uh, it's the number one social channel that B2B marketers used to uh, use to distribute content. Um, and you can see it outperforms uh, regarding lead generation, all the other networks, uh, social networks. So it, in, it has evolved into a publishing platform in the past decade, and it's an important traction channel to get leads, opportunities, or partners. Uh, so also, uh, looking for, um, like you were mentioning, Suvik, looking for a partnership. I've seen quite numerous posts when people have been looking for founders, um, and they would say if they can uh, uh, propose a good co-founder, and they've been asking that on LinkedIn, also on Twitter. So uh, maybe you can kind of approach things that way as well. Um, so why a personal profile matter? Uh, it's because people connect with people, not with logos, um, and messages are reshared 24 more times frequently when posted by an employee, um, and content is uh, shared much more, it gets more engagement than the company, and definitely everybody wants actually to connect with people, not the brands. That's why person, we are talking mostly about personal profiles on LinkedIn. So now you probably wonder, I've been kind of like talking about this minimum viable LinkedIn profile. What is this? So I'm, I, I will be, will be sharing you uh, the checklist for minimum viable LinkedIn profile. We will cover some parts today, uh, but we will not be able to go in the whole detail. So you can kind of check things later on. Um, and um, one of the things that it's really important is really to sort out your minimum viable product. I'm sorry, minimum viable profile. And then 
be open and go into this discovery mode. Uh, find your lookalikes, find people who are actually addressing the same clients or the same customers that you want to address and uh, try to uh, connect with them uh, quickly. And um, this is how you're going to actually eventually build a great personal profile. So it, it takes a few iterations. So don't get frustrated if you don't have a great personal profile yet. Uh, you just got to start. And um, this is actually uh, to do it like that. So now let's open. I want to show you before we go into the practical part, what is a great LinkedIn profile? and why that matters in digital age. Uh, the great personal profile has five Cs. It has consistency, context, credibility, clarity. And when you land on such a profile, you'll immediately know because you would wanna connect with this person. So it's kind of like, oh, I wanna invite this person for coffee because they are so cool, yeah? Um, and I wanna give you an example uh, here um, uh, because it, keep in mind that in the digital age, it's not important who do you know or what you know, but it's important who knows what you know. So I'll, I'll expound on that. So uh, a great profile will make you refer people that you will refer you people that you don't know. So, so this is how it works. This is Elle. I, I never met Elle. Uh, I just saw her profile. Um, and um, she has all the five C's of a perfect profile. Um, you, could, you can see that she has a qualifying statement here. Uh, who are her ideal customers? Um, she, she would say, we help responsibly source diamond gems and jewelry businesses from 1 million to 1 billion uh, to execute our strategies uh, that harness digital technology and increase revenue faster. You totally know she, uh, that she's actually after these jewelry businesses. And she actually has all the C's throughout her profile. You can kind of like check her profile later on if you want, but this is kind of like a benchmark of a polished profile. She has credibility, shares her accomplishments, she context, and you see here, she has a clear call to action, message me to get started. So, um, and of course her work experience supports her story and her skills and endorsements support her story as well. Uh, so what does it mean uh, uh, when you polish the profile right? Uh, you want your profile to have the L effect because for instance, if I would have a friend who would struggle with the jewelry business, I would refer him L um, uh, to help him out. So I wouldn't do that to help L. I would do it uh, to help my friend. And this is actually, if you're gonna have your profile right and people are gonna land on it, uh, this is the referral effect you're gonna get. If you are clear what you offer and you are clear uh, what you're after, yeah? So, okay, now let's, uh, uh, now let's uh, see how we can get to this profile. Uh, so probably you are wondering now because I, uh, what is the best thing uh, to start with? Uh, and um, if I would only have to pick two things that are most important to start with, I would start with your headshot and a LinkedIn headline. Yeah, these are the two mo most important things. So I'll give you a few examples here. Um, uh, these are four different people. Uh, you see that headline can be quite short, like in John's case, turning sprouts into trees at Speed Invest or can be very long, uh, helping leaders in HR win with change, with strong teams focused on leadership and agile HR. So on purpose, I'm giving you here two examples um, of two photographers, headshot photographers, um, so you can see how they presented themselves. Um, and also, you could be also funny in your headline to show a bit of your personality, or you can be very inviting like Lucia is, uh, that she's, uh, who, who, are, who is her target audience that she's after. Um, so um, one uh, warning, uh, why this is so important is because uh, headshot and LinkedIn headline, they're gonna look a way different on a mobile phone. And why you have to optimize for the mobile first is, 
because 70% of the users consume LinkedIn, even if you maybe now sit at the desktop, but 70% of the users consume LinkedIn on uh, the mobile phone. So if your headshot is not seen or if your settings are wrong, uh, this is what you're gonna see, no picture. And um, uh, you only see first 50 characters on the mobile. So use this real estate wisely uh, because if it gets cut off, maybe people are not even going to click this connect button with you, yeah? Um, so no, now I want you kind of like uh, to create your LinkedIn headline. So if you have one already um, to improve one, you don't have to use the word helping. Uh, you could use any other verb, but I want you to explain kind of like you would explain to my grandma uh, what you do um, at which company, but basically focusing what does your ideal customer or people you want to connect with, what do they get out from you? Uh, and um, here's uh, the drill. So I'm going to copy paste that um, into, so everybody can use it. I'm going to copy paste this exercise into the chat. Um, and I want you to kind of like take three minutes and try to write your headline uh, or update your headline based on what we talk about. Um, and I'm gonna give you some music for these three minutes, yeah? So write it um, in your uh, notes and then just copy paste it in the chat. Ah, okay, Hulk already posted, awesome. Helping engineers to become leaders, Hamna. Uh, using uh, role-playing games to improve function and quality of life for people of all ages, awesome, awesome. Some heavy uh, headlines. Uh, so for Hamna, maybe helping engineers become leaders at where, unless you do this yourself. Uh, Aha, uh -huh. Alexandra, helping founders develop products their customers would buy on time within a budget. Awesome. Aha, uh Kamna, -huh. yeah, if you do it yourself, yeah, then you don't have to name your brand uh, uh, if you are a freelancer. But if you work for a company, you usually put the company, so you kind of promote the company as well. Uh, wow, founders reveal the truth why users love their products. Wow, awesome. So I think we are done, yeah? We don't even need to be guys. Uh, so now I would propose, um, does anybody need more time? Uh, okay, so now I would propose we go in the breakout room um, and I want you kind of like, I'll try to organize the breakout room so it's two or three people. We're going to have 10 minutes. Um, and I would want you to show your headline um, to, uh, I read some of them, uh, to your peers. Uh, you don't have to explain in detail what you do, but try to get their feedback if they understand what they're into. Ask them, what is your, what, what is your customer? What do you think my customer base is? Uh, what, what, do you, what do you do? Um, and um, this is how you're going to test uh, and this is how you should be testing if people understand your headline. 
um, because this is on the top funnel. This is how you qualify the people you want to interact with. Um, and um, let's let's go to the breakout room. I saw some of the people joined uh, late. Um, um, so I think John, uh, if I put it right, uh, you just joined. So just John letting you know, we are going into breakout rooms. Uh, try to put camera on uh, for people in the breakout room. Um, and you're gonna catch up. We did, uh, we were writing the right headline. Um, and um, uh, this is how you will practice your headline with your peers. Uh, and I'm gonna call you back on time um, uh, uh, when the breakout room is going to be closed. So, um, so John, look at quickly in the chat uh, to see um, what we were doing, um, and uh, you will be able to review what colleagues did um, as well. So let me let me create these breakout rooms. You know what we do, and we we have a, a this meeting is there, being recorded, uh, but it, it doesn't fit as well in the small little bite sized pieces. Uh, otherwise, people just have no idea what it is. Yeah, it's this is always an issue. So, um, everybody, welcome back. Uh, I hope you had. I, I hope you have learned something new. What we've been discussing with Hulk is actually should be a long headline or should be a short one. Um, it's hard to gain clarity sometimes if you are selling something really complex in a very short headline. Uh, so um, you got to kind of like experiment with it. Sometimes a longer one would work better. Just mind these first 50 uh, um, characters. So I just want to give a word back uh, to you. Um, I don't know, uh, does anybody volunteer to say, did you, did you get any aha moments when you people were reviewing your headline? Uh, how was it? Who wants to go? John, we, uh, you were late, so maybe. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good, uh, I, I deserve that. Um, so I, um, the one I have currently uh, was, I help organizations learn, innovate, implement, implement and grow uh, slash ed tech advisor slash research consultant. And so I got some very good help and uh, they suggested um, demystifying uh, innovation for ed tech startups. Wow, um, yeah something along those lines, fill in the blank with innovation, scale, ability, growth, uh, evidence. So it was very good. Awesome. I, I totally um, suggest you invite people that are your ideal customers. If you have figured out some people they haven't, but if you figure out who are your ideal customers, you invite them for coffee or eat coffee and uh, talk about your headline. You have no idea what you can learn about. Uh, people are quite direct sometimes, and and a lot of times you would actually get feedback also from complete strangers who have no clue. They would also give you the best feedback um, because they would be aware that they don't understand, and you would maybe see it's too technical or something. So Hamna, you want to go uh, and tell us? Um, I haven't actually. Uh, I haven't actually built up the tagline yet. Okay, so I'm working on that. No worries. I mean, you have all the structure, so uh, just start with something and see if it resonates, and then you can iterate on the fly. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. I'm trying to find my customers right now. Okay. Okay. So worse comes to worse. You know, uh, you you will change it. Uh, it's not a printed book, so this is a good thing about it, um, and see how people interact with it. And yeah, when you are going to networking events or when you're connecting with people on DMs, try to kind of like try different pitches um, and say um, uh, the way you introduce yourself and see what resonates with people. And this is something you can use in your headline. I, I'm gonna change mine too. Uh, I, uh, I'll probably make it more bold. So uh, sometimes you gotta kind of like be boldy, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so awesome, I hope you learned something from this exercise and um, you can implement it and test it out on different networking events um, and use it also, even if you haven't polished your headline yet, you can maybe introduce yourself in a chat uh, in a new way and see if it resonates with people. Uh, so um, you can still introduce yourself, all, all of you in the chat so we can connect with each other uh, if you haven't connected yet. 
So uh, we are coming uh, close to a wrap up. So I just want to share uh, before, and then we can go uh, to all detailed questions. Um, so hopefully by this, uh, you are a bit more ready to build relationships in a digital first world. Uh, it's really important if you're a startup founder or if you, if you want to sell your idea that you have a clear LinkedIn profile. Um, sometimes it's very hard to get that from a start. So don't beat yourself up if you don't have a profile like L because it's numerous iterations. And this is actually how you figure out is actually by following other people um, and by talking to other people, yeah? Um, so I wanna kind of like invite you um, uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn, um, hit connect, uh, write me a personal message. I do have an open profile, so you can write me a message anytime. Um, and uh, I'm sharing my network with you. Uh, so you're gonna have more second degree connections um, uh, I also mentioned I'm offering this course on uh, networking um, and it's going to be in April, another one in June. So if you're interested in that, uh, DM me. If you just want to test it out, how is to practice networking, uh, it's actually on Monday. This Monday I'm running, it's all on my profile, I'm running a, a free workshop um, and it's a similar experience as this, but we're not focusing on the profile part. Uh, but we are focusing on these direct messages and connecting with people. So uh, we are, we're going to be practicing that. So just maybe a few also references uh, about the course. Um, I help a lot of people, especially the ones who are from tech world um, or even selling ice cream. So it doesn't really matter going to a trade show because you can really boost your conversions. If you before trade show reach out to people digitally um, it's going to be a whole lot different when you hit the trade show floor. Um, uh, so these are a few examples, either speaking or going, uh, that this LinkedIn strategy and e-networking before the show, so forming digital first relationship has been really, really helpful. Because in this case, you don't really have to become immediately content creator. Um, this is also a way to go. I post on LinkedIn every day. But I know a lot of people, they don't have the grit, they don't have the time for that, they maybe are not that versed in copywriting. So here you kind of like avoid that of posting every day, you just post around the show. And sometimes this is much easier. So you connect with people around the trade show or uh, the industry event you're going at. Um, so this is the approach I've been coaching uh, to uh, founders. Um, so. Um, I want to leave uh, uh, with this thought and open uh, uh, for questions. Uh, we never had such an opportunity to connect with like-minded or interesting people from the whole world. Uh, um, LinkedIn, of course, is just one of the platforms. There are all, also a lot of private communities, but I would assume uh, LinkedIn is the first place to start because also in private communities, they would always say, what is your LinkedIn profile? So people can kind of connect on LinkedIn as well. Um, and um, I would totally advise you uh, to start and give it a try if you are not active on LinkedIn yet. Uh, and now I'm open to any of the questions you may have or comments. And I hope there are some questions because LinkedIn is a complicated thing. So I definitely did in one hour, we could not cover uh, everything. And I'm sharing you all my links here. So um, there are some articles that are on Medium that are for paid version, but if you access them through my link tree, you can get them uh, for free. Do you have any um, tips on how to write a good about section? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's actually quite complicated, but if I say tip number one, um, it should read like a story. So it should resonate you. It should always have like about 20% uh, personal uh, data in it. Um, and um, so it shouldn't be, it can be sale, salesy, but it can be salesy through a story. So you got to kind of like write a story about it. Um, and um, uh, I would approach, this is what I coach people on my longer class. I also have been uh, run 20 cohorts of LinkedIn masterclass where actually I teach people how to run 
um, how to to do uh, uh, the that part. Um, and um, it's actually easier if you approach it from building blocks, yeah? Uh, so you say uh, there are like five building blocks, my achievements, uh, or my personal background, my values, my passions, my expertise. And once you have these building blocks together, um, my proposal or methodology I kind of developed is that you go find your lookalikes glo globally on LinkedIn and try to see how they uh, explain themselves. And there is another thing, you try to also find similar job postings that describe what you do, because especially if you're not a native speaker, um, you're gonna have a hard time using these right words. Um, and sometimes you think uh, you describe yourself well, but you'll see other people have done such better jobs. So I'm not saying you kind of like copy paste the summary from them, just maybe steal a sentence or two that would describe you best. So kind of like making a kilt, yeah? Uh, and this is what I call how you reverse engineer other profiles. So in my link tree, there's also a waiting list I actually have done on my Udemy course, uh, how to reverse engineer other LinkedIn profiles to position yourself as an expert. So this is the methodology to go about. But Bottom line is this is your longest biography on the web and it should it can be long and it should read like a story. So if you're able to nail that down, uh, that's awesome. Uh, but just start with some people who who's um, uh, uh, I would say you got to get into this discovery mode and see which uh, summaries resonate with you and then you can write a better summary yourself. It's kind of like a competitive landscape research. They are your not direct competitors, but you got to see what's out there because some people, they have done a brilliant job. You know, that's what I said. This is, this is why you want to have uh, the summary that has the right effect, yeah? So it, it's also, I have to say, it's one of the hardest things to write. <laughs> uh, so that's why I don't actually, we don't do it in this uh, mastery networking course because people get very frustrated because you have to get down to your values uh, and beliefs. And this is a lot of, so it can be a lot of soul digging <laughs> with that, yeah? Uh, but let's say, don't be too harsh on yourself, just write version one. Um, the reason why I said you gotta put achievements and outcomes into the profile is because women, we tend not to brag enough. So this is usually the section when I'm reviewing the profiles. It's kind of like, why didn't you put this? Why, where is your achievement? Um, and um, yeah, uh, keep in mind that part as well. Yeah, uh, that we, uh, even if it's gonna sound bragging for you as a woman, it's probably not gonna be because guys gonna do it 20% better. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, you also do, like we did it with this headline, you have the same approach with your a story, you re, your, your coaches, your friends review it, and your peers, and then you give it, if you have defined ideal customer profile, they also um, review it as well. Uh, and if it resonates with them, you know you did a good job, yeah? So you, it's kind of like trial and error review process in this case, yeah? Uh, okay, so uh, how to contact effectively people who have closed profiles? Um, so, um, what, what do you mean uh, by the closed profile? Like I said, I have an open profile, a closed profile. Um, nobody can have a really closed profile on LinkedIn. There is only, you can set it up in a way that if uh, you want to contact somebody that you need an email address, usually these are some VIP people um, who have millions of followers. Uh, so they only connect with people if you, I'll put their email address in. Uh, but I would say, try to read. Uh, I see people are quite sloppy about reading summaries. Uh, people usually give you clear instructions on the, in the summary section below how they would like to connect, whether they would prefer you just follow them. Uh, some are quite open. They would say, oh, uh, connect with me if you are looking for partnership, looking for this, looking for that. So it really depends. Uh, um, it, it, there shouldn't be some kind of like blast everybody with the same approach, but you should kind of like really read it, yeah. Um, so um, 
oh, skills and recommendations. Uh, how does that influence uh, somebody's profile? First of all, it's really important to have the right skills because I'm sure like if you, if you check the, this LS profile, if she would be in computer science doing jewelry business, uh, probably she wouldn't be. This is the first social proof people check, yeah. Um, uh, and of course, another one is uh, recommendations. Um, uh, I mean, you could really fake that, but nevertheless, people do a lot of cross-checking if they want to work with somebody. So I think skills, it's, it's on my minimum viable uh, list. And also the top three skills you select, this also determines your feed. So if your feed is crappy, if you put, I don't know, Excel spreadsheets, for instance, uh, as a skill, uh, top three skills, um, or Microsoft Office or something claim, uh, then your feed is going to be off. So you got to kind of like put the top three skills. And this is something, which are your top three skills? You can also learn from reverse engineering other profiles. Um, you just got to kind of like check out people who are doing something similar as you do. What do they have as top skills? And you're going to find out which are important uh, if you cannot decide, yeah? Um, uh, so yeah, I would say uh, people usually when they, there are different ways of uh, how they kind of like establish social proof. Some of them, they go right away and check uh, your uh, job credentials. So work experience, some people go check skills and some people they go and endorsements and others they go check uh, references. So there are different ways uh, how people check the social proof of the LinkedIn profile. So I guess probably it's better that all this is polished um, uh, in order to have a competitive profile. And if you are on a job search, skills are extremely important because the way LinkedIn works uh, is actually uh, e e recruiters uh, who have like a special mo module of, of LinkedIn, they actually search people through skills and you're gonna pop out uh, to them if you have the right skills they've been searching for. Uh, so in, if, you're, if you are kind of like uh, doing LinkedIn for career advancement, yeah? So any more questions? Yes, I, I want to ask one more question. So uh, you've mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, you've mentioned that LinkedIn is mostly uh, not what about, uh, about not what you want, but what people know, what you uh, know. Yes. yes. So for example, I would like to uh, launch a workshop and as a marketer, as a marketer with a wide experience in go-to-market, in uh, growth hacking, in online, offline, digital marketing, and so on and so forth, I have a lot of topics to speak about. How should I uh, find this one, at least from which to start? And uh, recognize whether around my connections, there is enough interest to this particular topic. Ah, okay. Great question. Just maybe heads up. Um, we are now like one hour has passed, so we are officially over, but I'll stay here as long as there are questions. If anybody has, has to hop off, that's fine, but we're going to record everything. So, but welcome to stay and pose more questions because I'm not going anywhere uh, as long as there are questions. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, th these are actually two questions, if I get this right. One is your positioning, yeah? Positioning is you got to figure out how you're going to position yourself. Um, uh, so which topics to cover uh, regarding the workshop. Um, and this is the hardest part to figure out because um, even if you know, I have also this problem, if you know too many things, if you want to kind of like explain everything, you're not going to matter to uh, all people. You just have to focus. Um, so this is one thing, how to figure out where to start. Maybe sometimes it's actually just starting and see this is this audience first mentality and see who shows up. And then based on that, you decide if there is interest or, or if there is no interest for what you're going to be offering. Yeah. Um, but uh, the point I was trying to make with this um, digital um, uh, world is actually if you optimize your profile that you are very clear what you offer and if this is some specific skill that people need um, people are going to refer you 
that they don't know you, but they will refer you just to help their friends. They don't care about you. They care about helping their friends, the people they know. So, so that's why um, even e-networking, uh, when you want to sell something, it always starts with clarity and positioning and your profile optimization, which is actually the hardest thing to do, yeah? Uh, uh, so you got to be aligned, yeah, uh, on all matters. Uh, so I guess you got to pick here your own battle, yeah, which we, what, what to focus on. It, it was very hard, for instance, for me, um, I can tell you from my perspective, because there are a lot of LinkedIn coaches um, and I, I have a completely other view. Uh, there are people coming from social media, people who've been great at copywriting and they've done, they build their personal brand through posting or videos. Um, and my view is actually more through the lens of going to market because this is what I've been doing most of my career. So my LinkedIn coaching is gonna differ um, to, from people who don't have this skill set. So it's always how you position yourself and what is the context, yeah? Um, so, uh, but it's all LinkedIn, yeah? You could say all LinkedIn coaches are the same, but they're not, yeah? Um, so it's, it's all about that, yeah? Um, but yeah, marketing, it's similar. It's, it's a very broad <laughs> uh, term, yeah? Uh, so I, I would say uh, try to focus on something, uh, pick uh, a niche. It doesn't have to be temp. It's a te it can be a temporary thing, yeah. Uh, uh, like with this beachhead strategy, um, niching it's a temporary one. Um, usually for coaches and consultants, it's recommended they niche forever. But if you are offering horizontal knowledge, like LinkedIn coaching or go to market, it's actually you cannot really. Uh, it, it's probably not wise in the long run you niche down, yeah? Um, uh, because uh, uh, it's, it's a broad market because it's a horizontal one, but in the short one you can, yeah? Uh, just to, that your message comes across, yeah? Any more questions? So if there are not any more questions, <laughs> I guess this is the end today, yeah? Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to my free uh, e-networking workshops. Well, welcome to my class and thank you for taking part today. And thank you, Perlect, uh, for having me. Uh, so uh, see you um, soon. Thank you, Yasna. Bye-bye.